you may well notice that we're handing out some rather lovely trophies this evening. TVE would like to say a big thank you to the big trophy shop who generously donated our trophies tonight. <laughs> now, TVE has another long-standing partner for the awards, and that is the University of Westminster. This is the fifth year running TVE has partnered with the Faculty of Media, Arts and Design for this evening. And once again, Westminster has produced tonight's on-screen presentation for the awards, as well as providing many of our technical crew who are second and third year BA television production students, ensuring that coverage of this evening will reach people and screens around the world online. So thank you to them. <laughs> and now I'd like to welcome to the stage Nick Nuttall, Chair of the Judges, to speak and to present this year's Judges <coughs> Special Recognition Award. Nick is Director of Communications and Spokesperson for UN Climate Change. Lovely, all right. Oh my God, there's a teleprompter. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm, never, I'm not used to actually uh, speaking uh, to speeches, but now it's gone. Okay, so, cool, thank you very much. This is really exciting for me. Um, it says here I'm supposed to say thanks for that introduction and good evening. God, that's amazing. Anyway, look. The films we honor tonight and the ideas and actions they express are part of an unstoppable global movement uh, of governments, of subnational authorities, business and civil society. Only just over a week ago, we closed the UN Climate Conference in Bonn, and that was the UN Climate Conference 2017. <coughs> there were 30,000 delegates in Bonn, and if you've ever been to Bonn, you know how small it is. Having 30,000 people there is quite amazing, but I think it underlines that you know, there's real enthusiasm to combat climate change, and deliver on all those 17 sustainable development goals. It's gonna be a long journey, but I think the appetite for success has never been higher, and put simply, we all know it makes environmental sense, economic sense, and social sense in respect to people's lives. This movement is happening at all levels, all scales, and in every corner of the world, you saw it in the films. The fundamental question is not that the direction of journey is not happening, it's can we do it with speed, and can we make sure it happens fast enough? And can we make sure that the peoples of the Caribbean, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, vast tracts of Asia and Latin America and Africa, and the Americas and Europe, because no one will escape failure, will they still have a home when we actually get there, when we've actually solved the problem? Scientists have advised that the pollution in our atmosphere is now at the highest for 800,000 years, and we should be very, very concerned. And yet renewable energies like wind and solar are now doubling in terms of worldwide penetration every 5.5 years. At that rate, the energy systems of the world could be completely decarbonized by 2050. So we can do it if we step up and step forward. So I want to thank all my fellow judges for their role and their fascinating debates over who should win. It's never easy, but it's always fun and intellectually quite stimulating. I also want to thank my girlfriend here, Bernadette Hengs from Germany. She's actually uh, wrote the uh, song and performed it with 200 kids in Bonn at the opening of the UN Climate Conference called uh, I'm an Island. And being here in BAFTA and having Bernadette here, I'm reminded that culture and the arts also have a huge role to play in shifting people's perceptions and in their behavior. In making these awards, we want to communicate the essential message we had in Bonn and that we can carry it forward in 2018, which is we can move further and faster together and we want the success of our winners to spur more to move further, faster, together. I now have the honor to make a special announcement, and it's the uh, winner of the Judges Award, and it is C40 Cities and the City Foundation for We Live Here Together. So please could C40 Cities and the City Foundation come up and receive their award, thank you. Part of the urgency of this issue is that cities are leading. Cities are leading on climate, but they're also leading on these issues of income inequality. If there is a way to combine social equity with environmental responsibility, that is powerful. This year is on track to be the warmest yet on record. Some new figures on global wealth and income disparity 
and they are so shocking it takes a while for them to sink in. At least 40 people are dead after a massive landslide in Colombia. Hurricane Sandy crashing on shore. More than 9 out of 10 people worldwide live in areas with excessive air pollution. 15,000 deaths because they were living at homes they couldn't afford to heat. If the warming continues, an additional 100 million people will be plunged into poverty. Thank you very much for this honor. On behalf of C40 Cities, I'd like to thank our partner, City Foundation, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us tonight. But I'd also like to echo some of the comments that Nick made, um, especially as a network of the world's leading cities, more than 90 of the world's leading cities, working together to tackle climate change. And it's really inspiring mayors and the leaders like we've profiled in this film who can give us hope when some governance, like my own in the U.S., are backtracking from some of our commitments to fight climate change. So we look to our, our cities and their communities to building not just a more uh, environmentally friendly and sustainable society, but really one where it's more equitable and just for all communities living on this planet. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you.